If you're caught up in a nuclear war of an evening, the first thing to do is take off all your clothes. Your clothes will have picked up a lot of radioactive dust, so ditching them is going to reduce your radiation exposure by about 80%. The only reason I even wear clothes anymore is preparation for nuclear war. Nowadays, most nuclear bombs are about 500 times more powerful than the ones that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, the mushroom clouds of these things can get 25 miles tall. Pretty scary, eh? Which is why you'll be pleased to know that nowadays there are approaching 30,000 nuclear warheads in the world. Needless to say, next time you're hanging out with a world leader and you seem a bit keen on trying to start a nuclear war, you should probably try and talk them out of it. A Harvard professor of law once suggested that the US nuclear launch codes ought to be surgically implanted in a capsule next to the heart of a volunteer, so that if the president ever wanted to launch nuclear weapons, they'd have to kill the volunteer with a knife. The Pentagon's response was, My god, that's terrible. Having to kill someone would distort the president's judgement. Understandably, lots of people are pretty keen on limiting the number of people with nuclear capabilities. So when a Swedish man called Handel attempted to split the atom in his own kitchen, posting a blog post about how he'd had a little nuclear meltdown on his stove, he was taken in for questioning. The scariest thing about nuclear reactions and radioactive materials is the radiation that they give off. I'm not talking about harmless radiation like from your Wi-Fi router or your mobile phone or radio mast. I'm talking about the high energy ionizing radiation that damages living tissue and causes cancers. There's a lake in Russia called Karache, near the Ural Mountains, which, when I was born on the shores of the lake, was so radioactive that one hour stood on the shore was enough to give you a lethal dose of radiation. Straight after birth, my mother and I legged it. We are all exposed to tiny amounts of ionizing radiation every single day. That means that every day is a cancer lottery. And this background radiation is coming from everywhere. It's coming from the rocks, it's coming from the food you eat, the air you breathe, it's coming from your friends. Some of it is even coming from outer space. In fact, the static that you see on old analog TVs, 1% of that is radiation coming from the echoes of the Big Bang that created the universe. Still, there's an enormous amount of misunderstanding about radiation. Did you know that Grand Central Station in New York gives off more radiation than a nuclear power plant is allowed to give off? That's just from the granite that it's made from. Marie Curie, an incredible woman, and one of the pioneers of nuclear physics, was exposed to so much radiation in life that even her cookbook is kept in a lead box considered not safe for direct human contact for another 1.5 millennia. There was even a period of time after Marie Curie discovered the radioactive element radium that people didn't know how dangerous it was. So it was put in toothpaste, condoms, sweets. There was even a man who drank 1,400 bottles of a radium tonic until he died and his jaw fell off. Here's a native bath banana. Bananas are sufficiently radioactive that sometimes people actually measure radioactivity in units of bananas. For example, Smokers get an incredible 1.5 million bananas a year more than non-smokers. That is literally as enormous as it sounds. Smoking is crazy. But once radiation is dangerous, nuclear reactors are usually not if they're properly controlled. I mean, the crew on a nuclear submarine is exposed to less radiation than someone stood on land. I mean, not only is the reactor safe to be around, but the delicious water all around the submarine is really good at blocking out background radiation. In comparison, flight crews are classed as radiation workers due to the massive increase in background radiation at altitude. You suffer this every time you fly. The background radiation of the world's surface is a lot higher than it used to be a century ago too. I mean, thanks to literally thousands of nuclear weapon tests, any steel produced after 1945 is too radioactive to use in a lot of medical instruments. And so we're still recycling old pre-1945 steel. And when we run out, we need to send divers down to the German battleships that were sunk in Scarpa Flow so that we can collect more pre-1945 steel that's been protected by the water. Much as radiation sounds pretty frightening, I want to stress that well-managed nuclear power is actually pretty safe. You can even consider it natural. Two billion years ago, underneath modern-day Gabon, there were at least six natural reactors, probably countless more elsewhere in the world, 
that just spontaneously set themselves up on reserves of uranium. And they continued happily generating nuclear power for thousands of years for no reason at all. It is important to remember that we are vulnerable to radiation. That's just part of the human condition. In 2004, a neutron star in the constellation of Sagittarius, 500 quadrillion kilometers away, exposed the Earth to so much radiation that for a brief moment, it lit up the sky with the same brightness as a full moon. It's not at all unbelievable to think that in the past, radiation blasts from outer space could have caused mass extinctions, nor unbelievable that it could happen in the future. Thanks for watching. I've got so much more to say about radioactivity that I'm going to do another episode on nuclear power. For now, share the knowledge. Remember, you can find all of my Science in the Bath episodes on YouTube and deliciously subscribe for more.